The question was posed to me recently about prayer. What is prayer from a shamanic perspective? All the spiritual traditions I'm aware of have some form of prayer as a spiritual practice. For me, like shamanic journeying, prayer is another way that you and I can connect to spirit. As I initially learned about prayer, it was done in a very focused way, usually around a specific idea or intention, or sometimes a need for assistance or support. People sometimes pray when they feel lost or in need of assistance, when they need something and feel powerless. Their desire is to tap into a source more powerful than they are. However, people also pray from a sense of gratitude. Sometimes you can be so full of gratitude that it has to be expressed, and prayer is a wonderful way to do that. All of this is true, also, of the Tremonic journey, of course. So for me, I see very little difference between prayer, meditation, or journeying as ways to connect with spirit. It's a matter of which one you feel most effective for you. Now there's another kind of prayer practice, though. It's often referred to as making a prayer. In this practice, prayers are created physically with a focused intention. I'm going to show you how to do this in a few minutes, but making a prayer has a more profound application to everyday life. You see, in some beliefs, every moment is a prayer. Every breath, every action, every thought is a prayer. That is a very profound way of living in the world. If everything you do is actually making a prayer, then you are always in touch with and possibly guided by spirit. Everything you think and do is rightly an honoring of all other things. You might spend some time in your meditations about that idea and how it might be able to fit into your everyday life. Now I would like to share with you how to make a prayer. It is a very simple and special ritual that takes some preparation, but is not at all difficult, and its effects can be profound. This is my mobile medicine bag and ceremonial pouch. I always carry it with me in my truck, just in case I come across a desire for creating an impromptu ritual. In it, I have all the materials I need, including a lighter and some squares of cloth. These cloth squares are about six inches each. They're, they're a little bit small for a lot of purposes, but they fit very nicely in the bag. And in there, I have red, white, and yellow. Red for south, white for north, yellow for east. And I often carry blue or black or green as well for west. And then I also have a pair of scissors, embroidery thread. So we set those aside for a moment. And let's take the cloth. Now I chose red this time because red is the direction of south and south is about healing. And this intention is about healing. In this pouch, I carry a number of different kinds of herbs. Also in this pouch, I have a small bowl for burning sage. There's a mixture of cornmeal and tobacco, and cornmeal by itself, and then tobacco by itself. We begin by adding some tobacco, several pinches of tobacco, to the cloth. There's no recipe. Just follow your heart and try to make sure that the contents can be easily folded into the cloth. Next, I'll add some cornmeal.
You can also feel free to add other herbs such as sage, pine, sweet grass, or any other aromatics that you feel appropriate to your prayer. I was hoping that this included some sage, but it turned out that it was more tobacco. So now to make the prayer, that prayer tie, you want to gather up the materials and remember not to put so much in that you can't fold it easily. Now there are two ways to do the fold. You'll notice that I moved the materials down into the lower third of the cloth, folded it up from the bottom first, then we'll fold on left and right. And then you'll notice if you fold it up, there's a nice little pouch into which you can insert the top part of the cloth. This particular pouch kind of storing or folding is great if you intend to burn your prayer tie as an offering. However, there's a different way of doing a prayer tie and that is to take each one of the corners, pull them together, and then close the other openings to make sure that none of the material inside falls out. And then take the thread, the embroidery thread in this case, it can be any kind of string that works for you uh, I chose embroidery th thread because it's easy to work with. Tie it securely. And while we're doing this, I want to point out that there are several ways of using a prayer tie. One I mentioned was to burn it. Another is to bury it or put it in water. Or if you have a long string, you see that you can suspend the prayer tie and let it hang. And there is the prayer tie floating in the air tied to the limb of a tree. This particular prayer tie intention was healing of the earth. This is one way to make a prayer tie. In this case I suspended the prayer tie about healing of the earth from a tree in my front yard in most cases of this kind, the prayer tie will be left as an offering to the elements and it will remain until the elements take it. In some cases, if enough time has elapsed and the prayer becomes uh, destroyed or harmed in some way, it's appropriate to take it down and perhaps to either burn it or to bury it. Time for the prayer to move along. This is about prayer, about praying your life, and about making prayer ties as a blessing and a prayer. Thank you for listening. We'll see you soon.